Hello everyone, John Magar with Altium, and I'll be talking about embedded components, what they are and how to implement them. I'll give an overview of the different types of embedded components and some general ideas of how they're implemented. And if this is something that's applicable to your needs, how to speak with your fabricator to implement embedded components in your design. So let's take a look back at what's driven the need for embedded components. Our everyday smartphones, as these have evolved over the last couple of decades, have gotten thinner and lighter. So to achieve this type of profile in a product, it's put great demands on PCB designers. So the techniques of embedding components have come about particularly from this one industry. So I'll give an overview of the effects of embedded components. So let's take a look at a standard traditional set of passives on a board. And it's estimated that generally about 50% of the component space on a board is, is consumed by passives, so resistors, capacitors that are supporting the active components. Now, when we start to embed these components into the board, it does two things. So we reduce the overall PCB size so we can get a higher density board, smaller uh, form factor, and we reduce signal noise. So the benefit is that when things are run internally only to an embedded component, there is less parasitic capacitance and inductance and therefore less noise. So a great benefit there for embedding components. Now that's just the passive side of things. If we look at active components, generally a lot of active components on your board will take up height and they start to generate a little bit of heat which needs to be channeled out and dissipated. So the benefit of embedding active components is that number one, it achieves a much lower profile. If we can embed the components below the surface of the board, then we, we gain that height. These also provide better thermal conductivity. If these can be arranged within the ground plane, we can thermally conduct heat and dissipate that out and manage the thermal effects better. Another benefit is that we can mount components as bare die. So we don't have to have a full package of a component. We can get it right from the silicon wafer and then wire bond it into the board. So this is an illustration here showing a couple techniques where we've embedded into the cavity of the traditional board, but we're using a more advanced microvia or blind and buried vias to achieve the interconnect and another technique, which is more of a packaging technique, is that we could put one package on top of another. This is commonly done for a processor with its mating memory device. They can actually be mounted one on top of the other, and then those two together could sit in a cavity. I've shown an open cavity just as an example here to show that that's possible as well. So components can be embedded either fully or partially with an open cavity on the board. So that's just a general overview of embedding components. Now let's take a look at the different types of techniques that fabricators use to implement embedded components. Now, the first category is probably one of the earliest to evolve, and it's referred to as formed. And formed means that we're forming passives out of special materials to implement resistors and capacitors. So the formed technique is limited to just these two passive types. The way it works is that a resistive film is used when creating the layers, and that film connects to the standard copper interconnect. And the film can be tuned using laser uh, drilling to have a very high precision, so about 1% or greater. Likewise for capacitors. 
but slightly different technique. Some metal plates can be implemented within the layering to form capacitors of desired values and then tuned to a desired precision. So that's formed. The next type is referred to as placed. And placed embedded components will sit in a cavity. And the two general techniques, there are others, are referred to as IMB, which stands for Integrated Module Board. And that's where we can place the components in a milled out or laser drilled out cavity within a board layer and connect through using different VIA techniques. Typically, when doing this, it's a considered high density interconnect, and you'll most likely be using blind or buried or micro vias. Now, the other type is embedded wafer level package. And this is where we take a bare die and place that in a cavity and likewise interconnect with blind and buried vias. So this is very commonly used, can be used for both actives and passives to achieve this burying of the components within the board. Overall height is much less and you're saving the space as well on the passives. Now the third technique is a little different. It's uh, referred to as molded. And here it's a process where the component is mounted on a substrate or the bare die on a substrate layer and then the layering is built up through additional layers of polymer. Uh, so this can be done for special cases where flexing is needed. And it's just another uh, category of techniques uh, that your fabricator uh, can implement. One is referred to as CIP or uh, chip in polymer. And the other one is referred to as embedded chip buildup. For details, you'll want to speak to your fabricator to plan out which technique is best for your needs. Likewise, cost will be a factor as well. In general, these techniques do raise the price of fabricating a board. However, in large volumes, embedded components could actually reduce the overall assembly cost. So there can be a net gain based on volume. Again, speak with your fabricator about which techniques are most applicable to, for what you need. Now, to get this information to the fabricator, you're going to discover that the typical Gerber format is not going to be applicable. Gerber just provides information about copper imaging. You'll definitely want to investigate the newer formats such as Gerber X2, IPC 2581, or ODB++. These newer formats take into account embedded components and can convey this information of component placement, component layer, component orientation to the fabricator because it's the fabricator that will actually be placing the parts within the PCB. For this uh, topic, if you have any questions or comments, please drop them in the box below. And thank you very much for watching.